Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric with One Number, and in today's Tableau tutorial, I want to cover with you how you can use a couple methods in Tableau Desktop to validate your join results. I personally prefer to use Tableau Prep when possible, but that's not always possible, so let's dive into uh, how you can use Tableau Desktop. Uh, so for this example, I have got some data related to uh, United States states. Um, some of the sheets have 50 rows for 50 states. Some of them have more than 50. Some of them have less than 50. So we'll look at how could we uh, determine how many rows our result set has, which values are missing. If there are missing values, you get the idea. So let's go ahead um, and, and dive into this. So I've got a sheet here called U.S. State Capitals. It's just 50 rows. It says the name of the state, the name of the capital. Okay. So if we want to do a join, notice that we're in Tableau's relationship dialog. So I'm going to hit the drop down on this U.S. state capitals connection and open. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do actually before I even join two tables together is just to understand how many rows there are in my data set. Um, so if you have a number of records field or the name of the table plus the word count, you can use that. Uh, but if you don't, you can always just create a calculated field called one. That's just the number one. And if you put that field on text and get a sum of the number of ones, you can see here there are 50 rows in the uh, state capitals table. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to connect to a table which actually has 50 rows uh, for 50 states. So this is called U.S. State Population 2020 Census. So I'll go ahead and drag this here. It looks like Tableau already figured out to join on the state field. So if I go to my row count test, and the result is still 50, cool. Like that's seems like that's probably what we wanted, right? Um, so great, if you get the number of results or the number of rows you wanted, your job here's done. But let's do a little more complex scenario. I'm gonna remove that. Let's say I connect to a table which happens to be missing a couple states. So I'll drag this uh, same data but missing a couple states there. So I do this inner join, and actually you can even see it here. Um, if you don't have too many rows, you could even maybe do some of this in the data or in this uh, data source connection window. But once you have like thousands or millions of rows, this probably doesn't really make sense to do it here. So now we can see we're down to 48 values. So one way that I will uh, find missing values would be like this. Uh, in this case, we have a simple join just connecting on a single field. So I'm gonna drag the original state field from the state capitals table to the row shelf. And then I'm gonna grab the state field from the state populations, drop that on the row shelf. So right now you can see on the status bar, there's just 48 rows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my data source, change this to be a left join so that no rows are lost from the US state capitals table. Go back to our worksheet about finding missing values and then you might be able to eyeball it. So you can see here like, oh, Hawaii is missing um, and Alaska is missing. Or if you wanna make this a little easier for yourself or if you have too many records to just try and scan like that, you can grab the state field from the second table, drop it on the filters card, keep only the null values. And then you can see here, it's just showing us Alaska and Hawaii, okay? Um, so I'm probably going to end up providing you this workbook. So let me just duplicate this so that I don't have to mess this worksheet up for my final example. Um, okay, so I'm in the copy data source now. So let me go ahead and open this. So finally, what if we had several years worth of populations in a table? So now if I go U.S. state capitals and then U.S. state populations and join on state. So I'll do my row count uh, one more time. Actually, it already carried the, the field over. Um, so this is our second example, right? So the row count's now up to 150. Like, okay, there are not 150 states in the U.S. What is happening, right? Um, or if we do some other sort of validation, like, okay, what does it say the population of each state is? Okay, California is the population of California. Um, three, is that, what is that? Is that 3.5? Oh my God, is that 3.5 billion? I don't even know what's going on there. So that doesn't seem very good, right? Um, so let's go back here and then we'll see that uh, actually there are multiple records for California, right? One way to see that actually would be, I'm gonna double click on this number one, 
then you can see, okay, three records for California, which is how we're ending up with this number um, that's too large. So what we can do here is if we had a year field that we could join on as well, we could do that. Uh, we don't. So um, another option would be to add a filter to, let's say, only keep the latest year of populations. So just a quick idea for that. If I add a filter, say OK. Um, let me see if I can do this a little bit differently. Is it going to make me pick a range? OK, let me do this slightly differently. I'm going to tell Tableau to treat year as a... <laughs> how to treat year like a dimension or a discrete field if possible. So if I make it discrete, hopefully if I go to add filters on year, it gives me the list of options. That's what I wanted. And then I could add a condition and I could say something like year, year field equals, and I'm going to do the little uh, curly braces, the maximum year in the data source. So it's not going to keep all the years, just the most recent year. You can see here it says just keeps 2020. So if we go back to our row counts, we're down to 50. If we go back to this sheet, uh, California's population seems much more normal at like 39 million. So we are in good shape. So cool. That's just uh, a bit of an idea on how to validate uh, your join results by using row counts, looking for null values, and then changing the join type to be able to expose where those missing values are, um, if there happen to be any. So hope this is helpful and uh, look forward to catching you on another video here soon.